Cookie D joined by Chalky and, of course, Life Coach, fresh off his victory in Group D. How you feeling, Life Coach? Yeah, good, good so far. Good? Of course, right. Of <laughs> course, yeah. Making it out in the group first place. So what do you think of sounds from saying preparing is for tryhards? Are you a tryhard, Life Coach? Yeah, uh, definitely. <laughs> I am, for 100%. <laughs> I mean, it, it was also funny because, like, I've um, been talking to Silent Storm, like, two matches ago, and, mm -hmm. um, like, when, when it was clear, like, that the Red will be his next opponent, I was like, hey, I mean, actually, like, uh, um, your decks are pretty great against the Red. Don't worry, like, because he was worrying a little bit, and I was like, yeah, your decks are pretty great against the Red decks, like... Um, what what does his patron warrior actually do against your decks? And he was like, oh, oh, oh what? He's playing patron warrior. And I was like, yeah, of course. I mean, everybody knows that. And he was like, oh, no, I, I don't do the preparation. And I was like, yeah, what? <laughs> like for this tournament, I yeah. mean, it's one of the most important tournaments. I mean, how can you not do the preparation? But it seems to work for him. So, I mean, everybody is different, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Proud to be a tryhard. <laughs> and uh, the next matchup is actually going to be a rematch uh, between... Um, Soundstorm and Phone Tap. They played uh, off stream earlier on in, the, in one of the first matches of the group, and Phone Tap, Phone Tap took that three to two. So it was a really close series, yeah. and both of these players seem to be on pretty equal footing. Chucky, what are your thoughts moving into this match? Well, I know Phone Tap like really respects Silent Storm and how he plays, but he's comfortable with his lineup against him, so he thinks he he thinks he has an edge in that aspect. Mm -hmm. And he said he was. Very lucky in game five, so he didn't think he was going to win. But now another rematch. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, we'll, we'll have, have to see. see. Well, let's take a look at the bracket from Group D from what we've seen uh, so far. Of course, the off-stream matches. Life Coach took out the Rat 3-0. to zero. Phone Tap took out Soundstorm 3-2. to two. We saw the really intense winner's match between Life Coach and Phone Tap. And Life Coach was the first player to move on. And now we're going to move into the final match of the day. The final match of Group D and the final match of Group Stages overall. Phone Tap versus Soundstorm. The winner moves on to the playoff stage. They'll be the eighth and final person to make it there. And, of course, the loser is out of the tournament. Yep. Going to be the eighth elimination. The unfortunate person. They had to wait around all day. Watch all <laughs> the, the other matches. Last match. In the very last match. So, Life Coach's fatigue play an important role in these matches. Oh yeah, definitely, yeah. I mean, um, I mean, today I think it should be fine. I mean, we have like barely 8 p.m. So, I mean, because of the organization and um, that, uh, yeah, actually, they, um, we always played like two games off stream. I guess you did like everything possible to actually prevent fatigue playing uh, too big of uh, importance. So, yeah. thank you very much for that too. Yeah, wasn't my decision, but... I will you take, take credit. I'll take yeah. credit for it. Thank you. I'm the face. Easy. <laughs> you know what, Life Coach? It was me personally. <laughs> All right. Well, you can see these two players. Soundstorm, not really needing much of a, of a chance to sort of recharge. He's just going to jump right into the next matchup. Uh, try and carry the momentum of the victory into the next one. So, victory! oh, we're actually going to jump right into it. All right. Well, yeah. Soundstorm's going to throw out the warrior, and Phone Tap's going to throw out the hunter. Yeah, we do see a Fiery War Axe. That's definitely going to be really good. Mm -hmm. Pretty good Hunter Hand, though, too. Yeah, Life Coach Yoshi, um, in your match against Phone Tap earlier, did you expect him to be heavily teching against weapons? With oh, the Ooze and Harrison in his uh, Druid and the, the Harrison Jones in his Hunter as well? Um, well, I mean, generally I expected, like, because there's, like, this... Um, Grim Patron Mania at the moment, and people are so afraid of this miracle deck. And um, I mean, that was actually like also how I actually picked all my decks. Like, um, I was expecting that everybody is so afraid of this Grim Patron Warrior that a lot of a much more weapon hate will be played. But also, like, the two tech choices the deck choices against Patron Warrior should be Control Warrior and Handlock. So, I actually expect um, to see much more of these types, and yeah, uh, yeah actually. I mean, what we can see, for example, from Silent Storm, and he's doing exactly that, like Control Warrior, Handlock. Um, usually not um, like completely orthodox, but um, in this environment, it definitely makes a lot of sense to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I think Phone Tap's debating between Haunted Creeper and Bo here. Kind of wants to stay on curb, but Bo doesn't really do anything. This sets him up for a nice Hound Master if Silent Storm doesn't uh, axe it off. 
But with the Taskmaster, I think he's pretty likely to axe it off, yeah. Yeah. Also because you prepared to proc the freezing trap already. Right. The Hunter doesn't want him to proc the freezing with just a Taskmaster. He wants to get a lot more value out of that. With a Harrison, the bow will really get ugly for the mid-range yeah. Hunter. <laughs> but I think he's going to bow it off oh. anyway. Um, but usually, like, Hunter won't break the bow. Yeah. So Harrison will usually simply hit the bow for two charges for, for right. sure. Right. I think he might just go settle for one, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not even sure whether I liked it too much. <laughs> yeah. He's going to have a hard time proccing this freezing without not liking it. I mean, with playing the Shredder, I mean, even if um, Fonte would have attacked the Shredder, then you get, like, the, to proc the freezing trap for free and then yeah. Harrison for two. So I actually don't like to play too much. Also, of course, spending the coin. Yeah, it Do does like make these turns a few a bit awkward. He had two six drops that he could have coined out these next few turns. Mm -hmm. Especially like Harrison, uh, especially like Thoris and two. So. Hmm. Yeah. So he's just gonna get Harrison back, but that's probably never gonna get value again. So pretty much as good as dead until later in the game. And the hunter will get the houndmaster value, but uh, of course really Savannah huge. off the top is much better. And like you said, he spent the coin, so he can't do something like shield maiden coin shield slam, which would normally be pretty fine here. Yeah, I guess Thorazin should come down. And yeah, yeah, just set up for later turns. Yeah, I really pity with this hero. Like, I mean, it's just like, I think for one, it's, um... So, boom on seven is fine, but there's also kind of merit to Houndmaster. You don't really want to leave Emperor up, but you do want to hit him in the face. Hmm. Yeah, I guess you simply play boom, right? I mean... Oh, what, what, what would you? Like... It's turn uh, seven. It is turn seven. Yeah. He, he wants to boom. Or would it right. make yourself too much open against Brawl? Yeah, I think that's the thought process here, is like he trades into your high main and Brawls. Mm -hmm. So instead you could do something like taunt your Haunted Creeper mm -hmm. and all face. You get more damage in that way. Um, I don't think you're really setting it for lethal that way though. And you're still vulnerable to Brawl, so I'm yeah. not sure. Um, Hopefully it doesn't... Oh, that, that would be like BGH a bit. Yeah, oh, this, this would be that's huge. not oh, good. That's huge. Uh, I, that's He's also huge. baiting out the BGH well, for Dr. Boom. It paves the way. Well, yeah. <laughs> he, he should trade now, I think, actually. Yeah, of course. If yeah. he's going to do that play, yep. Okay. Mm. But he traded really late in the turn, which suggests... I mean, the rope came, and maybe I didn't thought entirely through. Mm -hmm. Happens a lot where... You just have to go with the play that's in your head at that point. Yeah. And that was what was in his head. He houndmastered it, realized, oh man, if, if he has BGH. And then he decided to trade. So he missed eight damage, essentially. Mm -hmm. Would you go here for like BGH for sure, right? And then shield maiden and shield slam? Or like what's the play here? Um, he could execute instead of BGH, but I guess you don't really put your opponent on having uh, boom. Going go for Shield Slam Execute, though, actually, which turns out to be better, I'd say, since there is a Boom in his hand. So I don't know if this is like a sick read, or that's just kind of what he wanted to do with his mana that turn, rather. Mm -hmm. But turns out to be great. There's really not a great way through this Belcher. Yeah, I think I like Kill Command here. Because if you play Boom, you're just... You can't get through the Belcher. You miss so much damage. But, yeah, the Warrior really came out on top of these last two turns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, like this, you stay three mana inefficient. So yep. it's also pretty silly. There's a Brawl. Lots of armor gain. A BGH, a Brawl. I think Silent Storm is just going to be able to sustain through this. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, you got everything and the hunter is out of it yep. out of stuff and so card for card as the game goes on well i don't know he's drawing into his big threats yeah but now that savannah high is not as big of a deal because it's not like you're going to trade 
Mm -hmm. So the Savannah High main is just going to get traded into and brawled away. And basically, as the hunter, you have the burden of killing your opponent. The warrior is just going to play defensively. And once you get through two Savannahs and a boom, it's like, what, what else is there? Yeah, that's pretty much it. So, yeah, I think I like boom here, power here, though. Of course, you just have to go all face. And it's going to start the cleanup. Big game, the 7-7. Seven, seven. And Despite seems actually pretty good. Brawl? Uh, he could brawl here, yeah. And then whatever's left over. Whatever's left. He can you. deal with easily. Even if Dr. Boom's left over, right. he can still brawl plus big game hunter. So I don't know if you're ever going to get much more brawl oh, value than no. this. Well, the only issue with brawl... Okay, so let's say you don't brawl. You kill off some 2-2s. You BGH and you... You probably, like, you can either axe face or axe a 1-1. One, one. Either way, you leave him with 4 damage on board, as opposed to none, but then you leave yourself with none on board mm -hmm. when you brawl. But, and, yeah. and you develop a death bite. But that's pretty good, right? I mean, first killing the spider off, probably even attacking one boom bot with the shield maiden before you brawl, right? Like, like this, you set up the best value for it. Yeah. Also denying like the bo boom bot, at least one boom bot, because the five damage on the hunter's face should not matter uh, too much. Oh, actually, it isn't good. Yeah, I like the no brawl here, but I would have liked to see Despite over the shield maiden, mm -hmm. uh, just to get the, the whirlwind yeah. out next turn. Yeah, that because these one ones are just inefficient to clear with putting five and four damage into all of them when you can just be killing your opponent. And that's eighteen he has. I think these boom bots, where they hit, is actually going to be a pretty big deal. Because if he does manage to deal with Silent Storm's board here, he doesn't have that much stuff in his hand. And Phone Tap, I mean, yeah. he's starting to run out of cards. The cards that he does have aren't powerful besides High Main. But if a High Main comes right. out on the board and he doesn't have an answer, like he didn't develop the Death Bite last turn. I might have liked to see a Silence on that before he killed it. I don't know what else he's planning to Silence. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Who knows? I was thinking maybe this turn would probably be like... Well, you almost certainly want to unleash just to get value out of it, but you also want to play high main, and you also want to owl that off. And he's thinking he wants to max his unleash, but he just killed off two minions yeah. before his unleash. Which is not the worst, right? I mean. Yeah, he could have gone in with the spiders instead, though, first. So I think that might have been a small mistake. Oh, oh, oh. okay. Gonna trade a lot of damage away just to protect this high main. He traded five damage to protect a, a six damage minion. Also interesting. Yeah. There's Grom. I mean, I don't even know. Like he played the hounds for three, right? So he right. could have exactly as well quick shotted and hero power. So he actually decided that quick shot in the hand is worth more than pounds and two damage. I'm not even sure whether that's. Uh, Correct, right. He's running out of cards. I, I like Townsing that turn. I just think he kind of spaced it wrong and also uh, decided to trade for some reason. He valued that high main a lot. Mm -hmm. And when your opponent showed you last turn that they didn't have a great way of dealing with a lot of 1-1s and 2-1s, I think having 5 1-1s one -one is really good because it's hard to clear. Yeah. Like, not a lot of Warriors are playing just, like, Whirlwind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, besides, obviously, Patron, but... Yeah. Soundstorm knows that he's going to be able to grind this game out, so yeah. he uses the Grom here right. just to sort like, of clear off the high main. I mean, Phone Tap's basically just playing into his hands, and he, he knows he has that Harrison. Yeah. But he, he has to play a bow, because he has to quick shot. But his deck's out of threats, so this web spinner needs to get something insane. Oh, actually, by the way, with your Owl, um, you mentioned it before, like, that the Owl probably won't get more value out of it, and, yeah. and now he has it, to play it without any yeah, targets. So. Got no value. Basically exactly. saving 6 health, which is essentially non-relevant. Um, at the same time... Yeah, this has to be Harrison. Yeah. It's also funny, because the warrior wouldn't have had any any cards left, actually, like besides the weapons. Right? Phone Tap actually looked pretty, uh, pretty upset about that Harrison. It looked like he had just kind of forgotten about it. Like, yeah, he looks surprised. It's not something that you should forget about really you in shouldn't. a match like this. Yeah, you should be used to your freezing traps. Um, he's not too far off. 
killing his opponent, but... Actually not. Yeah, true. But he should get his beast first. Like, he should first um, take a look what... I mean, of course you sacrifice... Or do you, don't you like to sacrifice a web spinner? Just to get this card. This the is beast. Tough. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you just don't spend a lot of mana, right? So you just <laughs> want to get the beast and... I mean, not yeah. the ba beast, You just miss one damage is all, but... Is King Crush the best you can do here? Yeah, actually. Um, <laughs> actually, speaking of that, if you Lotheb, go all face and get King Crush. That's not even lethal if he armors, <laughs> but you're getting close. And that's um, what's important. Right. It also seems like Phone Tip is um, quite under pressure. Like, yeah. I, I guess it's like he's not used to have like this uh, major yeah. tournament, so you, you really can see like yeah. um, the yeah. pressure on him. Especially in the decision match. <laughs> yeah, every time he ends his turn, he just kind of shakes his head and, like, realizes the board and state is not good for him. <laughs> but... Uh-huh. Uh, and he's making the plays. King Crush, King Crush. King Crush would be one off. Oh, man. What is it? Mukla. Mukla, what? Nearly. Uh, well, yeah, he's he, almost there. <laughs> if he plays... He plays around King Crush. Yeah. I, w I probably would have played the Sylvanas. Yeah. I mean, what amount of... Wow, that's... Yeah, that's he's got Brawl. That's yeah. the main issue. So that's if the 7-7 seven, seven survives Brawl, is that game? Um, it is, yeah. After all that... Okay, Bone Tap has a 1-3 and three to win this game. <laughs> Unless Silent Storm sees a different play. He's got a two and three to be in a decent spot as well. Because if the Houndmaster survives, you're taking your opponent to three health. Mm -hmm. uh, he'll probably axe it off. Oh. And if you can draw some damage, quick shot, kill command. He already used both bows. Would you like to try to fetch something with the Acolyte? Or is no, I think you're just banking on the Acolyte winning the brawl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You, you match so. your chances. Mm -hmm. If you throw in the Acolyte to try and draw for something, it makes it so it's like a 50-50 yeah, for you, you to lose. Your opponent's, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, you increase yeah. your opponent's odds of winning by 17% flat. I'm not saying you should do it. Yeah. I, I was just oh, wondering. Oh, wow. Just wondering whether it's a consideration. Wow. Phone tap can't do anything but chuckle to himself. He hasn't been happy with this game at all. Mm. Yeah. That is... Awful for phone tap. Mm -hmm. In the end, this armor up, by the way, nearly cost Silent Storm the game. Like what you talked about. Yeah, like the, the Sylvanas. If he played Sylvanas, yeah. uh, it plays around every beast except King <laughs> yeah. Crush. Yeah. He played around the one thing mm -hmm. besides the other beasts. Like he didn't think, like, oh yeah, he could just get a pretty valuable beast. Like Stranglethorn Tiger would have been insane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Savannah High Main. Like, what do you do? You lose. Yeah. I mean, th this is also like. Um, Silent Storm actually armored up, mm. but he didn't even have any board. So right. it, it's like... Um, yeah, board is the most important thing at this point. Yeah, exactly. And, I mean, now it's just going to be a slow grind out. Funny thing is, Execute was the next draw. So even uh, if he did yeah, throw yeah, in yeah. the Acolyte of Pain, he still would have come out on yeah. top. Yeah, but... Sort of something that doesn't really matter, it but it's been kind of a funny thing to look still. at. Absolutely. So, Silent Storm was correct, and... And going for what he did. Yeah. Sure, Animal he companion. thought about all the. the Where's my odds. sheet? <laughs> Here it is. Uh, you actually save this animal companion, I think. So if your rolls huffer, you take your opponent to three. They armor up to five. So either way, it doesn't really matter if you top deck kill command. Yeah. Uh, I would. You could play the juggler. Um, the downside is bombs. The upside is quick shot becomes better. Uh, maybe also thinking of a potential unleash stop deck. But that's good not to play anything because like Armorsmith yeah. could bring. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Armorsmith yeah. is actually mm. a really important consideration, that's true. especially. Well, we know he has Deathbite Fire Rex, but um, yeah. So I really like that. Yeah, and it's definitely good to play, which enables. He's top gonna decks. go for the the win, and it is. Yeah, I got him. All right. Well, Snowstorm no. is going to take game number one. Yeah, at the end there, actually, with Cruel Taskmaster, he should have attacked with the bots, but not the boom and not the acolyte yet, because he could have Cruel Task for two extra damage off the top. 
Oh yeah. But he attacked with everything first. He trusted in those boom bots. <laughs> so he was still in a great position though. It's not like Well, he was dead to a top deck though, actually. That's true. Did he have kill commands left? Yeah. Okay. One. Fair one. enough. Mm -hmm. And one unleash potentially? Mm -hmm. Probably not. A lot of decks have cut down to one, but so it's a small thing. Not gonna rile silent storm. Yeah. But he, he finds a win with the the warrior. And he sort of lined up nicely there. He got the war control warrior into the hunter matchup. Yeah, it's not that insane of a matchup. We did see it got really close, but even with a really sick draw, the warrior draw lined up really well. Yeah, just had all the answers. Yeah, I did like the discipline of Silence from holding under the brawl for so long, though. Mm -hmm. It ended up coming down to kind of a coin flip to win the game, but. Had he just used it on that one turn where it seemed like, oh, you know, I could throw away seven minion, then basically wouldn't get value out of that big game hunter ever. Yeah. And potentially lose to the, the next high main. So Life Coach, I want to get your thoughts on the on the Shaman pick from Phone Tap here. He's one of the few players to bring Shaman. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is the Mech Shaman. What are your thoughts on that deck? Well, actually, I mean, Mech Shaman proved to be um, viable for sure. I mean, getting like top 10 places on ladder many times. And in general, it's quite a good decision to bring it if you expect a lot of hand locks. And this is probably what, what he expected. So I think it's just a tech choice and definitely viable. So if, right. he, if he actually manages to, or if he actually practice enough, it's definitely a good choice. But now we can also see the hand of him is just like silly, right? It's just like so perfect curve. Yeah. Would you keep uh, Molten against Mech Shaman? Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking that. But even even the Sun Fury. Even like the Sun Fury. Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah. If you, like, not simply the Sun Fury, but if you already got the Molten, you can simply right. keep him. Right, because that, those two cards in combination are something that they usually can't afford to play around, so they play right into it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, usually against Mech Shaman, you are already still in grabbing burst range, it. but <laughs> he's already grabbing his two drop. He knows that there's <laughs> he knows not going to be a, a play. But Hellfire comes pretty handy. Like, yeah, but probably to see. Wow. Oh, look at that curve! Perfect. Did curve. you ever see that? Well, like what? One, two, three, four, five with perfect drops. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's if you're playing silly. Mech Shaman, that's what you want. That's just silly. It sounds ooze. like it's going to take a lot of damage. That uh, that ooze could potentially do something. I mean, it might be too fast at the start. Yeah, and... I mean, in this case, no no yeah. burst, but there's the taunt missing, right? Yeah, you kind of have to Hellfire here. Oh, definitely it's Hellfire. Yeah. You go down to 13, your opponent's showing 3. That'll take you right into the Molten, but like we talked about, about yeah. keeping that Sun Fury, he has no taunt. Mm. No, look at that. Like, if the Drake and Molten into Taunt would have come down. Well, like, he could have, yeah, the, the Watcher, he could have taunted up. But uh, Phone Tap, not going to attack. Yeah, he plays around it because, I mean. Right, right. You have to assume your opponent has Taunt, and he actually top decked the Taunt. He doesn't want to sort of be locked out of the game but, if he attacks him and plays a double Molten. Yeah, so now he can take like him that. lower. He can take him to six. And, uh, oh, he can two. take him to two. <laughs> That's pretty good. And. Yeah, that's gonna be the play. Now he uh, top decks burn. Any burn spell, yeah. Fire elemental, not after, not next turn, but later in the game. I mean, looking at Silent Storm's hand, he has basically no way to win this game. Um, I mean, there's Molten and Taunt, so it's not. Yeah, I think Belcher might even be the best play this turn, though. Belcher? Or yeah, really? Belcher and Molten. Well, why should you not? Play? I guess you can taunt up too, yeah. That's that's much better, I think. Okay. Also, also, it's pretty. You're nice. not dead to Earth Shock, sure. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> that could be a factor later in the game. Yeah. Well, he's definitely gonna get rid of that Drake. And uh, mm -hmm. probably hold the other card left, and he can't really take nine. He's actually sort of on a clock here. Yeah. Because definitely. that nine damage Molten Giant is gonna start swinging at his face. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean. And an ooze is going to come down, actually. Oh, yeah. That's a big deal. Wow. Whoa. Another Molten. That's going to increase the clock a lot. Yeah. it's Actually, it's down to one draw, right? It's just... Pretty much, just yeah. Just like a draw or, or like game over. And I think like. Mech Shaman, like, despite having so much burn in their deck, it isn't over half, 
Right. So he's not, oh, not favored. At all. No, Maybe absolutely. what, one lava burst, two crackles? Like suddenly the handlock's yeah. favored. Yeah, as long as he goes huge. face and just plays stuff. Yeah. And yeah. we just saw him kind of illustrate that. He's like, if I go face with this and this, he's, he's dead. That's super good. And so this has to be wow. exactly burn. Wow. Let's or see it could be an earth shock. It could be an earth shock. There it and is! Oh. Wow! Phone tap. Ooh. Relief on his face. Oh. Yeah. He looks. Yeah, relief wow. is the yeah. emotion right because now. Because he was so ahead. Like, he, he was like, I'm putting him to two. Just some burn. Come on, burn. So he had brought double fire elemental, two crackles, a, a lot of burst, maybe. So shock. Probably mm -hmm. like a one in four, I'd say, to probably draw into that lethal, close to that. Yeah. With Somewhere 20 cards around remaining. There. Yeah, there's one man off Ragnaros. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but really exciting. He, life coach said it before. He looked really stressed in his first match. Every yeah. single turn, he was just like shaking his head, looking like he just wasn't really e excited about the rest of the series. <laughs> yeah, this might be a really important win for him. Like that might be what he considers to be his weakest deck. Mm -hmm. And I mean, based on his reactions, he seems to be a pretty emotional player. So just getting a win, kind of puts your head in a good place. 1-1, yep. one, one, now it's best of three, essentially. Yeah. And maybe these are your two best decks that you have left. So both players have Druid remaining, where Phone Tap has Hunter and Silent Storm has Warlock. Oh, that's in, that's in Phone Tap's favor. Yeah. So yeah. if you consider the mirror matchup sort of a wash, like they... Well, Hunter is just favored against both. Yeah, yeah. And so... Yeah... I would probably. I mean, it's the mid range hunter, right? So, right. mid range hunter is probably. And it's got the, the double against... hound master, um, which is pretty nice against Druid. Oh, oh yeah, against Druid for sure. Like, yeah. I completely agree, but I think against, against Handlock, Handlock. Okay. It's, it's probably rather a break, even like. Sure. I, I know, Not like. too favored. Yeah, yeah. Like, the general perception is that, um, that uh, Hunter is simply good against Handlock, but sure. the slower Hunter gets, like, it can really swing around. Okay. Right? And then. Of course, there is the, the mirror match of Druids. And I would say Druid also favored against Handlock. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, as you said, like, uh, Phone Tap definitely has the upper hand here for sure yeah. with the decks. And so, just like he said, he thinks his decks are favored against Silent Storms. It kind of showed in the first match. He came yep. out 3 2 on top. And he's hoping it shows in this match again. It's also interesting that he kept the Owl. I mean, I'm not saying, I mean, definitely. Um, there's something to uh, to be considered. Like, yeah. It's of course good against scientists and against Houndmaster buffed creatures and stuff like this. I'm just wondering whether you should keep it or not. It's a really close call. Yeah, I wonder if that ooze is the only golden card in Silent Storm stack. He just wants to make sure you know Every that. Every time he draws it, he's like, alright, got you. Just to remind himself. Looks back at his hand, he's like, I have ooze. I know, when I, sometimes I put in tech cards like that. I forget that I have them. And then a hunter plays a weapon and my and just, just, in my it's hand. just gleaming at you. Yeah. But if it's golden, right? But it's really interesting. Most players actually playing like oozes as tech choice, right? Yeah, yeah like we've seen quite a few oozes. So, it's it's really crazy. Yeah, it Both. hasn't actually done that much. No, I mean, of course not. It's it's ooze, right? <laughs> <laughs> Bloodfin ooze. <laughs> so he goes for the juggler, which is the more aggressive play. It's good that he didn't get Huffer here, else he'd be really weak to Hellfire. Um, he could have gone with Haunted Creeper last turn, going for more of a late game strategy. I mean, I think his strategy is definitely crutching on that high main coming out, probably on turn 5 with the coin. Uh, it tends to be really good against Handlock. We do see Double Molten, so... Double Molten of Sunfury. Big choice. But we also saw Fontab actually playing uh, around uh, Molten Giants in general, so... Yeah, but even if he hero powers this turn, tap Molten Sun Fury, Sun Fury becomes available, just with hero power. Oh, definitely. Uh, so he'd have to pass. Yeah, well, this is what I'm saying. Like, wow. uh, th Yeah, I mean, yeah. you could expect that. I mean, why why should he play like with right. a shaman around them and suddenly not with a slower deck? Right. It wouldn't make any sense. And so pretty consistent with how mm -hmm. he's been playing. And it saves him, actually. Like, yeah, if no Belcher. Would, yeah. Like, if he would have gone for it, then... Yeah, you don't really want to heal bot. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just going to be a Molten for five. I would probably play the one off the Mulligan. 
because a lot of players keep track of what cards you kept, and especially against Handlock, if they have that card for a long time hmm. and you're a hunter, pretty obvious, you know, okay, that's probably a Mullen. So, not probably not a huge deal, especially with, you know, Phone Tap seems to be much more concerned with his game. He could have decided actually to get a, an additional card for two life. Uh, it's yeah. pretty risky, but on the other hand, it's not super risky. I mean, if you think about it. He also has the other Molten, yeah. Yeah, the other Molten and also like 13 life means um, uh, uh, means Phone Tap uh, must deal like 9 damage with 6 mana. And that's right. usually not the case. So I would have probably simply like um, sacrificed two life in order to get this one plus one card, especially because he also got already the heal bot in the hand, right? So Right, so he's going to unleash one hound and go all face, putting him to mm -hmm. seven. Yeah. And this probably won't work. No, it won't work, but I it, mean, it could, because I don't think we're going to see heal bot this. Well, we could see heal bot, yeah. If he goes for taunt this turn, there is a small window of opportunity for yeah. phone tap to top deck one of his three other burn spells. Yeah, but it's super tiny, so... But, yeah. I mean, I definitely agree with Phone Tap here. I mean, he, he just has to go for it. I mean, there's no way that... Yeah, he... you're definitely taking your opponent below mm -hmm. 10. I might have just coined High Main instead of Unleashing for one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Hero Powering. That yeah. would leave your opponent at 11. Yeah, I agree. That's that's better, for sure. Yeah. yeah. It, because it just applies more pressure. Right, mm -hmm. and if your opponent... The worst part is, if your opponent does have a way to not die, they get to start clocking you with the Mullen. Oh, absolutely. Or at least one more. Ooh, he's even going for the heal, but that's super Wait, interesting. Wait, why didn't he play the other Wait, Mullen? Wait, Yeah, I have no idea. Whoa! What, what's going on? What? Is he next leveling us? Well, he's why BMing. would he hold he, back? He's BMing us. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. I'm going to win this game oh, without even playing Oh, he should have golden the Molten. He should have a golden Molten. That way, he can't forget. <laughs> that's yeah, exactly what it is. It's just like the ooze. He was looking too much at the Golden Ooze. What is going on? It's like next level out leveling Phone Tap because now Phone Tap knows there's no Molten. <laughs> if, you go, if you bring Silent Storm to 10 and then Silent Storm shows the second Molten, then yeah, Phone Tap is destroyed. Like <laughs> but what does it do? <laughs> it would have been the same as if he played it. I have no idea what's what going, going on, guys. On? No, yeah. really not. Like, this is just I too much for me. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Silent Storm's not really a player that shows much emotion. So even if yeah, he, he even if he made a mistake, we wouldn't know. He would just be like, hmm. "Double molten is for tryhards." Well, that's yeah, a really yeah, important. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really important thing not to react to, if it was a mistake, because that'd be a pretty obvious tell to phone tab. Oh, I forgot to play my molten. Actually, these are good old times, good old sunshine hunter times. Look at that, bars it into hounds. <laughs> oh, what we're the reminiscing. Fuck is going on? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying he maybe, should do maybe it. Maybe he'll but draw into one of his hunter's marks with that. Just yeah. like the old times. Yeah. That's just beautiful. I mean, probably not this turn, but uh, <laughs> it will come. It will come. All right. Well, it is there any come. way for him to get past this? Uh, I mean, he can Houndmaster. The unfortunate part about Houndmaster is it doesn't make anything survive against that Belcher. Yep. So, I mean, if you want to get through the Belcher, it involves Quick Shot. Or it involves Unleash. Yeah, but I mean... If you Unleash, uh, you probably want a Buzzard. You probably need those guards. Is this the, the first time we've seen... We're going to see a Buzzard Unleash in competitive play in 2015? Yeah, but you still don't get around the badger. Perhaps you should just yeah. ignore it and just play the high main. Like, I don't yeah. see it. Yeah. I could see that too. Just like you... I'm really surprised you just never went for this high main. And no hounds. Oh. oh! I mean, I can see Life the coach point. Life coach and I are devastated. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can see the point that he wants to destroy the mode. I mean, it's, it's definitely. He's uh, gonna freezing an owl, which yeah. is not good for the hunter. I, I think both players are under uh, a lot of pressure. Like a lot of pressure. It's getting late. I'm just really curious if the molten was intentional. Well, we'll ask. Because Silent Storm hasn't made many mistakes. No. Like, a lot of, like, questionable plays are actually deliberate from him, and you can very clearly see a reasoning. Yeah, but how, how could it ever be intentional? Right, you I need mean, because to just start unleashed. racing them. Maybe he's holding on to it for potential 
shadow My flame? I'm... Ah, nah. Is the only you, you can shadow flame like, like an ooze. I'm though. trying to find a reason. The, right. the only would be Thanks, like Unleash. TJ. Like yeah. Unleash would be the only reason, but even even like um... second Unleash would be the reason. Yeah, but but he even, had even Knife Juggler Unleash. I mean, it doesn't deal in two additional damage. It only deals one more right. damage. So it's it's really not worth it, I think. Timberwolf, Timberwolf Unleash. That's why. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's definitely why. Yeah. But it's funny, right? I mean, only one owl and he would already win. Like, Pontiff would already win. Yeah, he'd be extremely close and he'd probably get there with a kill command next turn. And the high main finally comes down. I would have yeah. liked to see it a long time ago, but... And it's, it's really important that this handlock get a win. We were talking about how it's, you know, okay against Hunter. Not very good against Druid. Yeah. Whereas Druid versus Druid, pretty fine. Druid versus Hunter, not not the greatest. Mm. We do but have to keep in mind, Phone Tap though, his Druid is heavily teched towards weapon classes, which won't help. Which won't help much unless there comes a situation okay. where Duraxis comes into play and well, the game if, is super grindy. If Handlock wins, weapons are out of the question now. Yeah. But here's like now the time for the double giant, right? I mean. Yeah. Oh, you there's just a put up a giant bunch in my hand. Of eight eights. <laughs> Double taunt. giant taunt. Okay, thank you. That's good. Yeah. And, and both that's go face, clock him. Yeah, yep. for sure face. And so, wait. It's super important. Top deck kill command anything. would be it. Yeah. Anything. Top deck anything. And also, like... No. Nope. I mean, Hunter would simply win if he could have somehow find a way to survive one more turn. Yeah, but you, you'd have to kill two of the 8-8s, eight not just one. No, you won't be able to do that, but... Yeah, you can't. But it's just like also really close because I mean he can deal ten damage, so we're talking one turn here. Right. He will kill two of the eight eights, but now a lot of his win condition is out the window. Yeah. Definitely. And yeah, it is correct to kill the Morton for freezing trap purposes. Not like that'll really come into play, but all right. He's got twelve damage on the board. Well, probably Jaraxus kill off some of the stuff. And uh, go face with the 8-8. Eight, eight. Yeah. Probably kill off the 3-2, three, 2-3, two, two, three, or 2-2. Two, two, and uh, you can probably put your so weapon into a 2-2. Two, two. Maybe your, you don't. Bring yourself down to 13. 13. Yeah, you just saw him be use safe. so much burn. You saw him use a quick shot and a yeah, kill command. Yeah, it takes the beast off the table. All he has is like potentially quick shot, kill command, hero power. That's only 10. The like Owl would make it. 12 to the breach. if you leave up a 2-2. Mm -hmm. So that should probably be it. I don't know. Got boom instead. Sure. I don't know why you would. Might as well heal for 3. Hey, could he die here to... No, I mean, in theory he could theory, have died. Yeah. I, I... Owl, quick shot, kill command. Kill command would obviously be off the top because he would have done that last turn yep. had he had 2. Yep. But just a small opening. Yeah, they yeah, right. would have also liked to attack the enemy because he wins next turn anyways. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, for sure. Well, mm. Soundstorm goes up two to one in the series. He's one win away from taking that second spot from Group D, making his way to the playoffs tomorrow. Bone Tap once again looks a little bit stressed. He's got to win two matches, two games in a row now, because if he loses this next game, he's out of the tournament. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean. He was really happy to be here, really excited for his first LAN event, but you definitely want to make a great showing in your first. Um, making it out of the groups would mean a lot to him, so this is pretty high pressure stakes here. And he almost 3 0 Druid last match, but fell short at the end. Yeah. So he's going to have to try to 2 0 Druid now. So Silent Storm now just has the Druid remaining, so he's got to beat either. The Druid of Phone Tap or the Hunter. And of course, Phone Tap is going to throw out the Hunter first because that is the more favorable mm -hmm. matchup yeah. in that situation. Leave the mirror for game five if there is one. There was some players like, going through open stuff. It's very rare, but some players pick the weaker decks first. Yeah. To save time, you know? Save time, <laughs> and then if you make it to that final match, you feel good. Yeah. You're like, Hey, I'm favored now. Yeah. Yeah, and also psychologically, 
it's bad for your opponent. Like if he knows, okay. I mean, if he was so <laughs> yeah. close before the win, and then you came back with the with the underdog decks, right. it, it really crushes you psychologically. Right. Because yeah. like, let's say Silent Storm loses this match, he's like, okay, we have a mirror match. You know, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. But say he lost a mirror match, he'd be like, oh. Oh no! Mm -hmm. Now I got to face a hunter. I have to beat Hunter. Exactly. Right. So there is some merit. It's basically just psychological, like Life Coach said. I think you just do whatever works for you, and you know, just try to play your best. All right. Well, Silent Storm threw away his whole hand in search of oh, innervate, wild Hunter's growth. Mark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No innervate. No wild growth. And again, we see Phone Tap already grabbing at that juggler. Yeah. Oh, the Druid answers are just so great. Like with the with the wrath double yeah, keeper. Yeah, this is gonna get ridiculous. It's gonna go wrath into another juggler and a coin keeper. Definitely. So, Lefko, do you play a lot of Druid? Uh, I've seen most players today throw away the Shade as Druid against the Hunter. Do mm -hmm. you agree with that play? Oh, absolutely. I think the Shade is like uh, a nice um, slot for your 3 mana slot because 3 um, mana is actually pretty important because you don't want to hero power. Like, hero power uh, is not only like quite weak in general, but also leaves you with one mana left. So you really need these three mana drops, but uh, you don't mulligan for them, of course. So first of all, your priority is to get like one of the inner weights or the wild crows. If you have like any of these cards, you don't need the shade at all. Yeah. But if you actually miss these cards, the shade can actually help you not to lose uh, immediately. So that's actually the idea behind it. And what we see an angry chicken, we see Huntress Mark and the chicken crow. hype. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I think that's the first chicken we've seen from a web spinner. Probably. Actually, actually, um, did you like the Hunter's Mark on the Keeper? I yeah, think that it's was a, very interesting. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite a weak target, right, against Druid. Right. Especially yes. like if, if the Shredder comes down. Right, like, assume he doesn't, you're going to see the Keeper into the 1-1, one, one, and then you can just trade into the 2-3 with your, your Shredder. It's not the worst thing in the world. Exactly. And then you still got the Hunter's Mark so for now, Druid. Yeah. Well, I think one thing you might, might have been thinking was, if he trades in my 1-1, which he will, I won't really have a great activator for the Hunter's Mark in the future. Mm -hmm. So I should just kind of use it while I can. Cash in. Right. But it will be a little weaker once some taunts start coming out, like uh, like that Drew the Claw. Obviously, Sylvanas is just going to come down first. He's mm -hmm. especially happy he drew that Force Nature to deal with any uh, freezing drop. Yeah. And so we might see something like trade in Mad Scientist to get the Freezing Trap out and then play High Main because you can't afford to not play High Main this turn. Yeah. You, you can just uh, send bows in, right? You should probably just send bows yeah. in, trade with the bow. Yeah, like, agreed with that. Yeah, definitely think that's, that's by far the best. So he traded the Shredder first, which is important because that way he kind of knows if he can deal with that drop that Sylvanas steals. Mm -hmm. Uh, worst case scenario, he could always just have it freezing trapped. Yeah. Angry Chicken could end up being a good Houndmaster target. That was what I was thinking going to turn five. It would have been really nice, but... That's a very Angry Chicken. Yeah, that's like, what, seven, six of stats for five? That's not too bad. <laughs> I must save my... yeah, Silent so, Shade, right? Yeah. Yeah, just going to silence it. And now Keeper's already threatening to get... Uh, Freezing Trap back to his hand. I think you can't really respect that, though. You just have to... You're even going to play the chicken. And just smork him. Yeah, but it's super close. Like, it's a, it's a super close game, actually. Yeah. Like, because Hunter, I mean, as soon as Hunter is out of cards, that's it. But, I mean, Druid is incredibly Druid's under really pressure. Low, yeah. yeah, it's super low. So... Well, you definitely hear it, Bauer. I mean, next turn, there will be Force of Nature into Shapeshift, but... Still, the high main still... I mean, oh, he could he could handle the board, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's not uh, that bad. He can handle the board, but he's not taking initiative Ooh. on it. Yeah. He's basically... Now the Shade gets Freezing Trapped, unless he... Uh, and now he just force just Natures. Kill Command on, on Keeper, that's also... Yeah. Do you like... I, 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 I didn't like, like that I too much. Have just, like, hero You're power. so low on cards. You yeah. really need to... Get hero the power. value out yeah. of your hero power. Absolutely. And also, like, I mean, kill commanding a 2-4 is really not what you want to yeah. do, do in this situation. Like, I mean, it's really only about the life count. You want him to proc the freezing trap is the thing. Because that mm -hmm. gives yeah. you three extra damage. Yeah. Getting a six mana keeper 
when you're not like in a close game as mm -hmm. far as board, it doesn't matter too much. It's not like you're ever going to need, you know, something and not get keepered. Yeah. Yeah, and it's also like uh, the five damage. Uh, oh, oh, wow. That's huge. Wow. That is one of, if not his best draw in his deck. I think that is his best draw because... You go face. Yeah. You, you could kill off the BGH with your bow. Uh, yeah, wow. you, I, you will, right? I mean, I think this game's good. over. Yeah, if you kill off the BGH with your bow, how can you lose? Uh, nine mana swipe? Yeah, nine mana swipe. That was the only card that keeps phone tap in the game, really, because this next turn... This next Silencer turn would have been huge for Silent Storm. Yeah. So it is. And oh, that's game. No. Wow. No way he can swipe now. Wow. And so we will go to a game five. And that is super tilting if you're Silent Storm in that situation. That's yeah. the first time we've seen him show like any sort of emotion whatsoever. I wasn't He's really frustrated. Him. Was he? Yeah. Wow. Fully unplayable hand at the end there. Hmm. All right. Well, it's only fitting for these guys. This is a rematch, of course. We talked about it earlier. Their last series earlier in the day that was played off stream went to game five. And this series as well is going to come down to a game five. And the game five is actually going to be Druid versus Druid. Winner moves on to the playoffs. Loser is out of the tournament. Only a fitting matchup <laughs> to decide yeah. your tournament ending. Mm -hmm. You're either going out off a Druid Mirror or you're going in on a Druid Mirror. Whether or not they have wild growth is probably going to okay, be so imprinted in their it, brain yeah. how this tournament went for them. Ignoring Innervate and wild growth, Life Coach, you've played a lot of Druid Mirrors. Mm -hmm. Like, what are the keys for this? For the Druid Mirror? Yeah. yeah. Well, usually, um, I mean, whoever gets the pressure for, off first, like, right. usually wins it. And, of course, wild growth helps tremendously yeah. <laughs> because it just accelerates your complete turns throughout the whole game. So it's actually... Uh, a card uh, gives you like a 7-8 mana board advantage. Right. The only way actually to swing it down could be like if somebody plays Dr. Boom and then with BGH you can come back. It's really, like mm -hmm. this This match is really like nearly only about tempo. Like yeah. really only about tempo. Like not, not much else, right? I mean there are no secret tech cards like in yeah. other classes, big AOEs or big uh, turnaround cards, like game turnaround cards. There are simply none. So yeah. yeah this so it's, it's going to be all about aggression keeping the board wild growth helps a lot to do that tj yeah it's just usually like you as, as a druid player you just try to bring your opponent into combo range and then they have to do yep. crappy stuff and do, as soon as they have to do crappy stuff you simply win usually. yep yeah. well we see a wild growth on one of their sides <laughs> <laughs> i don't really actually know either yeah and that's the only card that gets capped Ooh. And it's two wild growths. Coin into wild growths, wild growths. Are you kidding me? I think that's phone tap. That is phone oh, tap. Oh, wow. He's got to be really happy about that. No, you, absolutely. So do you coin one of these wild growths? Absolutely, yeah. yeah just to sure. start going? I mean, that's not even close. Like, if you if you don't coin it, you're much, much slower. Yeah, so you just right. coin it and it's so, it's so strong. I mean, even if you're first track, double wild growths is... Not much better than one, but right, the right. second to act is just silly. And uh, it's looking pretty Harrison good for the season one champion. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Silent Storm, I mean, look at that hand. <laughs> We've seen a lot of good draws from Silent Storm, and this is not one of them. No. I mean, on the other hand, there is no five drop, right? Right. There's no four drop, so. Phone tap not hitting his drops despite having the ramp. Yeah. Uh, BGH would give him a perfect keeper target, though. Yeah, never. You can never play the BGH. Never here. play the BGH. Okay. Well, of course not, right? I mean, there's Silent keeper. Storm disagrees. Oh no. It looks okay. Like, well, okay. No, if you play the BGH, no. oh, <laughs> life god is just like distraught. Serious? Okay. <laughs> what happens? He's thinking. What happens if he plays Druid of the Claw next turn? Like, yeah. does he have any way he's to? He's trying deal with to it? challenge the Druid of the Claw by going keeper plus BGH, and now, now Phone Taps kind of overthinking it. He's like. Does he want me to keep her this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, do it. Keep her it. Go. Especially if he saw where he played the Molten Giant from yeah. in the other match. <laughs> the far left. It was the far left. Why didn't he play it? Yeah, I mentioned he should have played the one he kept. Yeah. Oh, Thorazin is so huge. Intermate Look at Thorazin that draw. Now. Oh, my God. Like, that's really one that's of the That's one of the few draws that right. keep him in this. He's yeah. back in it. No, I was just wondering also because of the um, because he knows that of course uh, Druid and Font Druid plays Doctor Boom. So right. It's it's really like the BGH. Like that's one of the ways yeah. how you lose. Already decided. Yeah. He's like, 
Well, if he has boom, I guess I'd lose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really like this. Yeah. yeah. Oh, 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 what? You should, what? Yeah. Takes a what? I really would have liked to cycle Wrath there. Wah. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're, oh, we're joined here with Live Coach, who's the probably the person who has the most Druid games. Played a lot of Druid. Play. Uh, oh, never mind. Wow. And now, okay, well, he does that big game hunter for when this boom will come out. Do you just like luring here, just to force your opponent to trade? Uh, yeah, yeah. You can just yeah. Lure. Just want to get all those cards. Phone tap's still in a great spot though. He's got BGH for the doctor. Boom. He's got BGH for the boom. Very important, or else this game would shift dramatically. Does that play into your? your uh, decision making here? Do you might want to play the Sylvanas instead because... I think Silent Storm's in the state of mind where he's just like, yeah, he won't have it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, this is this is something you can really see. Like, for example, like with the Wrath, like, Pontop actually just made it um, because it looked like from the first glance as a possible play. I mean, of course, um, he just forfeited uh, four life with his play, so he, wow. he actually lost four life with oh. his... Oh. Wow, that's huge. But um, it seems for me like that... Uh, like no matter what, like he just wants that it, it he gets over it very quickly. So yeah. like the match should be over, then the pressure is like not existent anymore. Uh, or lore, any lore off the top's pretty good. I think he would have gone Sylvanas for sure if that hadn't been drawn. He's still considering it though, because he really needs to get no yeah. He's trying to get pressure off of himself. But uh, and, I, and one keeper has already been played, right? So right. So he's not really expecting the second one and an innervate draw. Yeah. Gives him a lot of room to play around. Gonna wrath it for one. It's definitely gonna silence it. That that's definitely happening. Oh, wow. And that's that's a great oh, draw. That yeah. fits his curve nearly perfectly. And he'll pro he'll probably definitely trade here. Yeah. What do you can actually oh he's de shading, yeah, that's that yeah. unstay, I think. But yep. what what you can see here by the way is um also um like Fontap is on the edge of getting flat again. And uh, this is 20 damage. If he top decks Savage Roy, that's game. It's over. Yeah. If he top decks it, it's over. Oh no, but Lotheb is really good here. Lotheb might lock up the game. Phone Tap's in a position where he's. I could like, even see Force of Nature innervate Lotheb and just. Like, you can clear the 5 5 or you can go all face. Yeah. You have so much damage. You're gonna go for a clear, and he's definitely innervating that Lothab and going all face. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, it's super good. And with ten in hand, he's gonna have sixteen on board. Kind of puts his hands up in a prayer motion. He thinks he has it. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And that, that should be it. I don't think there's sixteen on board. Silent Storm clearly has to heal, and that won't be enough. Yeah. And so the season one champion going to be eliminated. 3-2, three, 3-2. Two, three, two. He did not avenge you, Chalky. He took you out in the finals <laughs> of Season 1 of the Legendary Series. Oh, man. I'm sure you're sad to see him go. You know, it is kind of sad to see him lose, but I'm oh, really happy for Phone Tap. Oh, yeah. Like, you can just tell, oh, he, he's oh. actually... Like, he doesn't even know he's won yet. Yeah. He's still shaking his head. Like, mm. this means so much to him. Yeah, especially mm -hmm. since uh, the last couple series for him have been super close. Yeah, super down he's to had the wire. three twos every set. Yeah. And that's it. He finds out he's going to win. Wow. Alrighty, <laughs> with the force he's of so nature. Relieved. Look at that. Look <laughs> wow. At that. I think so Phone relieved. Tap is our happiest winner yet. Wow. It's really cool to see a genuine reaction like that, though. Yeah. Alrighty, well there you have it. The season one oh. champion has been knocked out by a phone tap. He will join Life Coach and move on to the playoff stage from Group D. <laughs> so ecstatic. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Someone might want to go check on him. <laughs> yeah, Silent Storm looks pretty defeated. I don't think he, you know, played too badly or anything. Mm. The I agree with Phone Tap that the matchups were definitely in his favor. Uh, so Silent Storm kind of came in at a small disadvantage, and the draws didn't really go in his favor in some of the matches. Really close set. 
sets because uh, lost twice, three two to phone dab. So, you know, a bit bit sad for him to go, but really great to see phone tap moving on. Yeah. Lefko, do you think he's got a good chance moving on in the tournament? Oh yeah, I mean definitely. I mean he's um I mean he qualified for that many tournaments. I guess like for him it's probably whether he gets his nervousness under control. So yeah. I'm I'm not saying he did a bad <laughs> job, but I'm I'm just saying um I mean, despite being that nervous, he of course played yeah. quite uh, very well. Yeah, um, but I guess uh, he could even be uh, perform much better. Like if he um, could just shift this um, uh, this tension, like yeah. that he just says, "Okay, that's a tournament, but um, I have to get the best. I don't have to perform." And if he gets this under control, I'm sure like um, he will have good chances for sure. He's got a day to recuperate. He's got a day to sort of relax and get himself in the zone. Well, he has a night. A night. Yeah. We're playing tomorrow, and TJ. That, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it seems like a full day. I guess it depends where he plays in the, uh, tomorrow. But uh, yeah, it is going to be less than a full day for him to recuperate. But mm -hmm. I think that's enough. He's got the experience under his belt now, being in the booth uh, quite a bit now today. He played, what, ten, nearly yeah. 10 matches in there? Mm -hmm. So Hard not to be pretty confident in yourself after you, after you get out of groups. Yeah. And Soundstorm, I mean... He can't be too upset about his performance either. He he played well. He had a lot of close series today. And he won't be able to defend his title as the Legendary Series champion. Uh, but I'm sure he had a We're lot of We're going to crown a new champion. Yeah. Yeah, of course. All right. Well, we do have Phone Tap standing by on stage with Dan for our winner's interview. Thank you so much, Azumo. I'm joined by the last player to go to the round of eight. Phone tap, you looked extremely emotional uh, at the very end of that series. Just walk me through how you're feeling right now. Oh, man. Uh, I, I was in, it was like a repeat of just life coaching. Yeah, Druid versus Druid again, you know? It's, I, I had tech cards that ruined the mirror, but I, I drew the wild growths, and that's, that made the difference. And <laughs> um, I'm super happy I won. It's, it's amazing. I can't believe it still. Is there something uh, more that's just the win itself and the glory of winning and being able to advance? Is there anything specific? Like, was there people that doubted you, or is there something that you wanted to prove to yourself? Um, uh, I don't know if there were doubters or anything, but I, I really wanted to prove myself and advance, and this, this is just the first step, and hopefully we'll see what happens tomorrow, and I, I might be able to go the way. <laughs> sure, sure, of course. Uh, how, how do you feel like you can calm yourself down. It looks like you were nervous at certain points. Is it hard to kind of soak things down? Because you are on a new team. Uh, this is the first tournament that you're appearing in. Is it starting to sink in a little bit, or do you think you'll not get used to this anytime soon? Um, right now, I can't imagine me getting used to this, but this is, oh, I don't, I'm trying to not sound awkward, but this is, oh, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, the crowd here is being very supportive of it, and thank you so much for everybody who's been supportive of Phone Tap. You did a great job. Tomorrow, uh, I don't know who you're exactly playing. I think it's the first place finisher from Group B, but we'll, we'll check in on that in the brackets. It's, it's going to be Roger, actually, from Group C. So if you're going to be playing against Roger, how do you think your chances are going all the way here now that you defeated the Season 1 champion? Um, once again, Roger, uh, that's a very tough opponent. He, he has a... Um decks that are pretty strong against mine. So it's, uh, I would have to hit the right matchups and once again, uh, draw pretty well. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, well, we'll see tomorrow uh, how you're able to do. Congratulations again, Phone Tap, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow for date number three. In the meantime, we're gonna go over to Casters for one last closing comments before we wrap up the show because we are done with Group D. Let's see what they have to say. Thank you very much, Dan. And thank you. And once again, congratulations to Phone Tab. Very well played. And uh, it's going to be a really fantastic day tomorrow. Life Coach, of course, we're going to be seeing more of you play throughout the, the round of eight tomorrow. Are you looking forward to that? Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, like everybody is like, um, like only strong players in the top eight. And mm. it will be really tough. And I'm looking forward to it simply because of the challenge. I guess like... Of course, the chances to go through all the all the way through are pretty slim, but like trying always the best, and then just see what how it goes. Yeah. All right. Well, we can take a look at the bracket, the schedule that we're going to be seeing tomorrow. That round of eight bracket. We'll start off the day with Demigod versus Domdis, two of the players that made it to that last chance. Then, of course, that matchup that Dan talked about, Roger versus Phone Tap, and then we'll round off the day with the second half, Trump 
and Kit Kats, and then Raynad and Life Coach. And at the end of the day tomorrow, we will crown the Hearthstone Legendary Series Season 2 champion. So I'm really looking forward to a day filled with Hearthstone action tomorrow. Yeah, me too. Should be pretty great. Mm -hmm. Really excited for this top eight. Yeah. And of course, Life Coach, you're going to like this next bracket. We can take a look at the prizing structure for the Season 2 Legendary Series. And uh, $10,000 goes to first place. And of course, 100 World Championship points. It gets less than less from there. But we have $25,000 worth of prizes and 200 plus World Championship points to give away. So it's going to be a really exciting day. And I'm looking forward to the culmination to the ending of that Season 2 championships. And let us know what you guys think. Uh, join in on the conversations. Tell us your favorite matches of the day. Follow us on Twitter at ESL Hearthstone. Use the hashtag HLS. And uh, I'm sure we'll be joining in on those conversations after we uh, get out of here later on. But uh, it's been a really fun day. And uh, you guys have any final thoughts before we send it back over to Dan? Yeah, this event's just been awesome so far. Really excited to see how it ends. And can't wait for day three. Oh, good stuff. Good stuff. All righty. Uh, well, I think we have Dan standing by on the stage for some final comments. That's right. We've had a lot of fun today from the crazy finishes to those Kaka Raynad series to watching Sandstorm not be able to make it, but hopefully another player can succeed and worthy of that Dark Horse crown in Season 1. Or we got to see some of the old Star Wars like Life Coach continue his dominating run so far. Day 3 promises to be absolutely epic. I can't wait to see what's going to happen as tomorrow starting at 11 a.m. Pacific, we begin once again here at twitch.tv slash ESL underscore Hearthstone to find out who will be our Season 2 champion to take home $10,000. Like to give a big shout out to Gigabyte and Plantronics for helping making this all possible. Make sure to check out all of our sponsors here at the ESL Studios in Burbank, California. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys tomorrow for day number three.